Hiya. I was cycling from Nina and Tipperary to Athenry and Galway one time and it was a long and it was a lonely cycle because the country is very suburbanized at the moment. A lot of people are working. You hardly see anybody all day long. And then just outside Loch Ray, I came across this place called Finnerty's Mills and it was a joy. It was an absolute joy to land there. Have a look at this. So I'm huffing and puffing through East Galway when around a bend I come across this. It's a restored mill from the 1600s. And while that's interesting enough in itself, the mill really comes alive because of this woman. So this mill then here was used for wheat, oats and barley. Maria Finnerty. She's the daughter of the last miller and the mill has been in her family for generations. She'll show you how the water turns the mill wheel, which turns the cogs inside. These turn a shaft that runs upstairs and turns another cog. This turns a millstone which rotates against a static stone and grain is fed between the two stones and turned into flour. They're the basics, but Maria has plenty of nuggety facts to pass on, like where the phrase nose to the grindstone came from. With the stones turning, they heat up, it gets warm. Okay. So you have to know the smell of the flour. So that's how the, a good miller would, would uh, put his nose to the grindstone to smell. Ah. That's the or why the millers used to call one piece of machinery uh, after an old word for a woman, a damsel. When that should be turning, it's rough here, it should be hitting off this edge here, making the noise. And that's why they call it a damsel, because it makes noise. Sexist, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. And listen to Maria talking about the different kinds of wood in the mill. Obviously, the lighter coloured wood is newer. They were restored with the help of Marika and Mark Colleen. They're a Dutch couple. But then, the darker wood around the heavy machinery is not just old, it's tough. You couldn't saw through that with a chainsaw or anything, it's that hard. Really? Yes. Which is really, really hard. And look at the teeth on those cogs. They're alternatively wooden teeth working on metal ones. They never have metal cogs touching metal cogs in case they spark and the grain dust explodes. Wood. And the most exotic wood and is upstairs, an oily wood from the Caribbean used for lubrication. And that is a st self-lubricating wood, so it would keep the stone moving smoothly. You couldn't use your three-in-one oil or anything like that okay. because you had a food, my, the food might touch it. And would they rub some of that on the stone? Or would they no, it? this was a wedge that was put down beside the stone nut. When the stone should be turning, it would warm up and to rub off that, so you didn't have to be oiling. Maria might have got her interest in the technical from her father, who was a bit of an inventor. He took the axle from a Model T and made a water-driven mechanism for raising the bags of grain. There's also a little museum attached to the mill, and Maria and her family serve tea and scones for visitors. I didn't film the tea and scones. Sorry, I was too busy eating. The tea and scones are part of the entrance fee, which is six euro. Now, a few six euros a day is not going to pay for a place like this. So what's the story with money? Minimal support from the Heritage Council. Very minimal. Actually, I, I, we would like to continue on and do further work, but there's no funding available. Right. No funding available at all at the moment. So I'm thinking back on it now. Thinking back on it now, I would have been better off to just open it up and run B and B, Airbnb or something from it. Would have got more. Really? Yeah. More. There would be more Put interest. Put some beds in it. Put some beds in it and run Airbnb. I'd get more money in. Rather than keeping it. As Rather a than keeping it as a working mill. Just as well she didn't turn it into an Airbnb. They're ten a penny, but there's only one Finnerty's Mill. Finnerty's Mills, just outside Loch Cray. Lovely scones, lovely tea, really decent people. Worth checking out. See you next time.